Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community on Google Plus and also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net uh, in the UK. Uh, he's uh, based in Wimbledon, uh, close to the city of London, or in the city of London. Um, he, Masataki is also uh, a uh, Google product expert um, on the uh, AdSense community. Mike fisher Kirshner is head of SEO for Turn River Capital in the United States. He's based on the west coast of the USA, not too far from Silicon Valley. Um, Rob Mars is an AdWords aficionado. Um, Rob um, is, um, he just gave me a message, just let me see. He's uh, a Google product expert uh, on uh, webmasters and Google Ads. And... Um, Rob is based in the Netherlands. Um, also with us tonight, we have David Rosam. David uh, is an internet marketer. He's based on the sunny south of the UK, uh, close to um, um, Brighton. Um, you can find um, David at uh, davidrosam.com and writingforseo.org. And Tim Kappa is CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he's uh, also a Google product expert and local search expert uh, in the uh, Google My Business uh, community. All right, um, episode 324, we've got six questions. Um, the first one uh, is from Neil Cheeseman on the best way to deal with event URLs. He said the website has several venue pages slash URLs that have about 1,000 events in total during the course of a year across all of the venues. Each of the uh, single events published several weeks, um, uh, months in advance, has its own URL. They are unlikely to recur next year, although vaguely possible. What to do when the event is passed? A, remove the event and let the URL 404 by virtue of it not being in the site map. Or B, leave the URL with the same information on it uh, apart from a booking link. C, something else. So... For me, um, I'm assuming that these events are within the actual locations URL structure. So it would be whatever location forward slash events and then forward slash whatever the event was. Um, so you can... <sighs> So you can do it in two ways. Yeah, I mean, keeping it live, but then just removing the booking information and saying that our next similar sort of event we're planning for blah, blah, put a sign up in it. That's a great way. That, that, that's a good way. We do a lot of that with our hotels for their different special offers that rotate. So that's what we do. We remove the actual special offer, but it's there and the URL is quite generic. We don't actually... They're quite generic ones like family special or uh, holiday, you know, and then they'll stay live, obviously come out of the nav, but then so you can do it that way. Um, that's the way we, I, I personally do it. Uh, it works really well. Uh, they get a lot of signups, um, you know, people registering for their next one, especially ones people that have been before or heard of others that have gone. We do get a lot of signups, you know, for when release of the next one, etc. It works well, and that's why we keep doing it that way. Um, but I wouldn't, yeah, I mean, I would probably, I wouldn't 404 it. I'd probably uh, 
redirected to the top line of that event section for that property, you know, or that of that thing. Uh, if I was going to do it, I, I, I'd be hesitant to 404 it, especially if it was a really popular thing. Um, you, you just, you know, 404 ing it's not doing uh, the users any good if it was shared a lot. Um, I would probably redirect it to their, that properties, that locations event page. Um, so it may not be there, but it, then it still shows the next load of events or available events. Thank you, Tim. Just like to call out people like uh, Michael Stricker and uh, Michael Martinez, um, our forum stalwarts uh, that uh, look after questions as they are asked throughout the week. Um, the, their contribution uh, is um, very much appreciated. Have we covered this one for uh, Neil Cheeseman, do you think? I'm recording that as a yes. We're on the number two. We've got six questions tonight. Cassie Richardson wants to know how to track traffic from a mobile app uh, to a website. Oh, well, if it's one of your own mobile apps, then you have control over what you do. You can at least set, um, <clears throat> you can at least send the data over. Um, uh, yeah, so whatever kind of analytics system you use, I presume kind of Google Analytics, um, you can essentially kind of tag and send the data over and overwrite uh, it being seen, most likely I think as direct traffic. Um, if it's unfortunately uh, just directly through mobile apps, um, then you're kind of, uh, there's not much you can really do if, if uh, last I checked on that, because you don't have control um, from that data. Um, yeah, so you're really up. You're really up to the winds on what what the uh, device and app is willing to send over. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go back to the to the first part and assume that it's one of your own mobile apps. Um, the way that normally kind of I would look into that is um, how you want to define um, the kind of the concept of if it's your mobile app to your mobile site, do you want to consider that to be internal traffic, one consistent experience with the data, or do you want to consider that kind of a, as if it's a separate website? Um, I mean, that's kind of going to be your own preference. Uh, to be honest, um, I can kind of see the argument going either way uh, for that. Um, I might personally keep it separate because it's kind of like fundamentally a separate site uh, in that regard. And so for any kind of links that are going into the site, um, I would probably, um, let's see, so source will probably, I would probably set it as, you know, potentially a, a, as a specific yeah, that would be interesting. Um, app would be probably, the mobile app would be probably the source. Medium will be dependent on, you know, uh, how you want to define it. Could be direct, could be, um, uh, or none. You could kind of set it as what what kind of link you're, you're using for that. You know, if it's a, a, an ad-based one or just a regular link. Um, and, you know, that that at least is kind of a starting point to consider. Um, yeah, it's been a bit. I don't. It's a good question. Um, I don't know what others have on this. Be curious to know. Thank you, Marco. Anybody else? No. a good answer anyway let's move to um number three on our run list another one for neil from neil cheeseman is it wise to paginate category pages um it's a woocommerce question um he said 
particularly if increasing the number of products increases the page load time. Um, what do so, you mean by doc complete? Uh, is there anything anything else uh, to consider? I.e., uh, um, real uh, example: seventy-two products takes two point nine five seconds to load. Twenty-eight products, two point three. Um, results via web page test. Um, what's your take, guys? So before Micah answers Neil's question. <laughs> <laughs> I just before we just before we came on, I was just I just spotted something that um, uh, the rel prev rel next Google says they they not um, following that anymore. So my question is, if rel prev rel next is not uh, in fact, even the page about Rel Prev Rel Next was 404 on, on, on the Google Docs. Um, my question is, is how should we deal with that now? Especially like, you know, like for example, here on a category page, which has, I don't know, could have 10 freaking pages to it. Um, or your category, like your blog category, which is, could have 50 pages to it. How, how should, how, how, hmm. I mean, John Mueller in that, in that whole Twitter thing did say, you know, we still, still try and follow the best thing. So, that's, but that's a Google way of going, yeah. Zzz, zzz. Um, so for me now, I've always used rel prev rel next. What now? Do I just no index the following page? I mean, Yeah, it, it's, it's, I mean, this is literally kind of the breaking news. Rel prev, rel next, no longer used. Um, even though it's not been used for like a year and a half or whatever they said. Uh, yeah. um, I don't you don't, you shouldn't know index them because you obviously, well, you, I mean, so, well, yeah, no index follow is still all right. But. Well, no, that's not necessarily either because that's a temporary measure, it turns out. The ideal way, I suppose, would be to individually modify each one's title and description. And then you, yeah, oh, freaking heck, man. Yeah, like, this, this gets, yeah. It's, all right, so it's okay with, you know, paginated category pages. You create some limits. So going to the first part of the question, it's fine to do it. You put some limits in. Um, yeah, like five, ten pages worth and saying, okay, this is good enough. Um, yeah, you want to make sure it's like, at what point does the result of the pagination, um, is it worthwhile, you know, keeping in mind how many pages, well, at least until the next seven days, maybe a little longer. I don't know how many more days we'll get out of the new, uh, out of the old search console to let you know how many uh, pages Google is crawling on average before, you know, before you have to actually go to your log server uh, directly. Um, you want to keep a balance between how many pages Google is crawling of your website per day, um, or really it's resources, I should say, but how many pages is crawling versus how many pages you want to feed Google. Um, the, that balance means, you know, you may only want to show a few pages before you go, no index, no follow, don't go through any of it. Um, and the value of kind of putting more pages on, uh, or putting more content on a single page. Um, I think it does come down to a balance of your load time plus conversions. Um, yeah, you're going to have to essentially test to see how many, how many products is ideal uh, where yeah, does your rankings go up effectively uh, over time versus the potential drop in conversions you get from increasing the load time of the page? That's really going to be the the balance that you have to kind of figure out. Um, yeah, like kind of the first part is you know if you're if you're under generally three seconds and you you know you're going from two to three seconds, probably 
fine to add the extra amount of content. Um, but if you start hitting going above three and you go four to ten seconds or something, then yeah, you, you you're going to want to limit um, the amount of products that you're you know putting on the category page. Um, to the point of the actual pagination, um, I I've always generally been uh, for the most part in the past when it's been large sites, I've I've always created some kind of limit, 10 pages at most. Um, and of course, as the smaller the site gets, the fewer uh, paginated pages should be there. Um, there are exceptions to that when you start talking about kind of non-paginated paginated pages, like your blog. Um, uh, but within at least the, the product section, um, it, 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 yeah, I, I've always been more of a fan of like, okay, you've got paginations, but then you want to have kind of other functions of links going to different sections, um, you know, your top products or the most relevant, well, okay, that would be the category page, but what are other kind of things that might be um, valuable to get links to so you're not just linking to two deep pages that don't matter. So, you know, you've already got paginated, first set of pagination pages, which is going to be the relevant products. You should have some links there going to your top products and your newest products. Um, those kind of three sets will be more value, in my opinion, than it would be to like expand the amount of paginated pages that you're sending over to Google. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, if, you, if your server's all right, um, the difference between 10 products and 100 products on a page uh, shouldn't make more than a couple of milliseconds difference, should, should it? I mean, well, you would think, um, and the way that, so if you have control of it, that's, that, that would be nice, but that's not always, that's not really the case because oftentimes it's having to ping the server for, each, for a larger set of data and then it's taking a lot longer. Um, so what sometimes um, I've had done, not necessarily for, for product or category product pages like this, but, um, anytime when you're having to ping a server for that that situation is to uh, create a cache or essentially delay how often it's updated. So that way the page loads really fast. Um, it might not be fully up to date to that second, but if you say, all right, don't update this except once a, let's just say once a month, then at least it's generally going to be a consistent set of, of URLs you're linking to that are still going to be there. That's mostly fine. That's going to match relevancy wise, um, and that way the page loads really way faster than it would be otherwise. Um, and then it's only like once a month when you're it's going through a whole refresh of the site. Um, will will the site kind of slow down a little bit? Thanks, Morgan. And and. Um What's your opinion on, on lazy load? Um, would that be an advantage in, in this case? I mean, lazy load is really, really more around imagery than it is anything else. So uh, you really should be doing that for, you know, if, if image, <laughs> how do I put it? Image search is, is Nice. If it's not crucial to your business, then go 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 crazy with lazy load. Um, that helps for sure. Um, you can also always prioritize and say, okay, the first six images loads up. Everything else has is lazy loaded, uh, and just you know, for category pages, that probably is not an issue because for the most part, it's your product page that should be having those images load and be the ones that are linked to. Um, so that uh, I'm I'm perfectly fine with kind of like images being lazy loaded as, as the page loads up. Yeah. All right, Neil Cheeseman, I hope uh, that's useful to you. I'd also like to thank Daniel Fonda for his uh, contribution. And just one thing, uh, Daniel, if you happen to be watching this, um, please don't ask for personal messages um, because um, if you do that, um, somebody else that's reading this very same question, uh, who is not named Neil Cheeseman, um, will um, be left in the dark. Um, if, if, if you help uh, Neil uh, uh, on the group, um, 
other people coming along later um, will be assisted. You'll be multitasking. Um, number four on our run list, Lauren Baker asks, uh, do we know of a tool for bulk page speed analysis? He's looking for recommendations. He said, I'm trying out batch speed for this now. That's a task and I were talking about that um, uh, in the green room. Um, <laughs> yeah, Euro Profiler uh, web page. Is it web page test? I think it's web page test.org allows you to. Um, you can do 200 for free, but then you got to set up your own server. Um, which allows you to do so. Um, this is, I haven't even looked at the, what people have recommended here yet. Um, I think there's an API setting for Google PageSpeed Insights now that can allow you to do some larger sets of, of data, um, but I haven't I haven't dived into that either. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not familiar with. I'm looking at the the list here. I'm not familiar with SpeedMonitor.io uh, offhand. Thank you, Micah. Also, thank Jason Munn and Dave Elliott for their contributions. Uh, see, that Dave Elliott uh, is a tro um, works like a Trojan. Um, I don't mean that to be a bad thing. All right, uh, anybody else on this one? The penultimate question from Graham Legg. It was asked on our SEO questions community on Google Plus. On deactivating Yoast, he said, I have a question. If you set up your SEO using Yoast and get green lights and then deactivate it, will this help your site or hinder it? Uh, neither. When you say deactivate, what? Deactivate. Um, if you remove Yoast, um, the settings will probably be removed. So your settings, well, because, but hang on, green lights don't work on settings. Green lights only work on the amount of stuff you've stuffed into the page, because uh, that's how the green lights work, is basically, yeah, it's key, based on keyword density, really. Um, no, it won't do anything. However, if you remove Yoast, you're typically, your, your, your settings for media, um, your tags or categories or incident, incidental, depending on the theme you're using, weird kind of archives and categories, if you've set those, those will be removed. Um, if you're switching to another thing like all-in-one SEO or, or any of the other ones, just make a note of your settings and then when you, when you uh, open up another one, just go and re-input your settings for, you know, your titles and all this kind of stuff, um, uh, just re-input them. But the green lights, you, 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 you only literally Yoast works on uh, keyword density. So if you've got the keyword in the title, you've got the keyword um, in your H2s, you've got a keyword mentioned every you know in, every now and again within the copy. And you have to actually physically add it into the keyword thingy magic in the in whatever they call it in the foot in the uh, what do they call it um, the focus keyword. Even if you've left that out, you don't get a full green line. And like the focus keyword is is just it's you see what I mean? It yeah, those green lights they literally mean nothing. But it's the other settings that you've set up that you want to make sure that you reset up with whatever other plugin you're using or within your actual, you know, if you're a developer within the actual site itself. Thank you, Tim. I think that covers it for Graham. Um, and let's look at our last question for the evening from JL Favaria. It's um, how, how is there a way to verify if a website has a Google Search Console account?
I mean, if it's a third-party site, uh, you can check the source code if they've established it via a meta tag. Um, you, uh, the rest of it is likely next to impossible to find out otherwise. Um, yeah, that's that's honestly, I think it's the only way that one could find out for sure. Yeah, the rest are essentially it's GA, domain DNS type stuff. Um, a uh, 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 blank robots file somewhere on the site that you don't link to. Um, and then just if you've been added as your own user from somebody else. So, um, yeah. Beyond that, I don't think you can find out without doing some real hacking, trickery, etc. Thank you, Marco. All right, anybody else on this one? Okay, it's that time again. It's thank you for watching time. We thank you for your interest. Uh, your your interest, uh, your participation uh, makes um, what we do worthwhile. And for that, we are truly thankful. Um, we'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. I thank uh, Tim Kappa. Mike Apichi Kirshner, Masataki Wasa, Rob Mars, and uh, David Roseanne um, for their uh, contributions tonight. Thank you very much. Um, but for now, it's um, good night. Um, well, it will be good night once I figure out which button to press. <laughs> <laughs>